light of truth shone brightly when Jesus Christ walked the earth. All who truly followed Jesus reflected the light he radiated. But Jesus foretold that after the death of his apostles, there would be a falling away from pure worship. That apostasy would be so extensive that genuine disciples would practically disappear until the conclusion of the system of things. At the same time, a counterfeit form of Christianity would flourish. And so it happened. To understand the Jehovah's Witnesses and the attitudes they have today, we need to look at their founder, Charles Taze Russell. If you ask a Jehovah's Witness today, they will say that Charles Taze Russell was a sincere Bible student who poured over the scriptures and he was used by God to start a great work. But really, Charles Taze Russell was a synchronist. He studied many different religions and beliefs. He took a teaching from here and there and he blended them all together until he had a set of beliefs that he could agree with. Russell took many beliefs and teachings from occultism and he blended them in with what he learned from the Bible. I'm sure many of you are aware of this statement he made in the first Zion's Watchtower where he said, A truth presented by Satan himself is just as true as a truth stated by God. Accept truth wherever you find it, no matter what it contradicts. Russell's willingness and the willingness of his successors to combine other religions and beliefs in with the Bible have led to much error and deception over the years. As I mentioned in my last video, Russell's ties with the occult can be seen by his use of symbols, such as the winged sun disk and the pyramid, but we'll get back to that one. As for the winged sun disk, it is an occultic image used in magic rituals, especially in Egypt. And according to the winged son of Thebes from Egyptian mythology and Egyptian Christianity by Samuel Sharp, in ancient Egypt, the symbol is attested from the Old Kingdom. 26th century BC, often flanked on either side with a uraeus in early Egyptian religion, the symbol Behedeti represented Horus of Edfu, later identified with Ra Harate. It is sometimes depicted on the neck of Apis, the bull of Tha. As time passed, according to interpretation, all of the subordinated gods of Egypt were considered to be aspects of the sun god, including Kepri. So we see this is an occultic image and no matter where it was used, it was used to represent false gods. It seems that just as Israel, when straying from Yahweh, called a golden calf Jehovah, the watchtower used the winged sun symbol, the representation of Horus, Sol, Baal, Solsus, Behedeti, or whatever it is from pre-Christian idolatrous religions on their literature, just like the Freemasons do. And they also argued to make it out of something that is non-satanic. Charles Taze Russell was absolutely obsessed with the winged sun god symbol. We know this symbol apparently originated with the Assyrians, but it's mostly identified with the Egyptians. But what exactly is it? What does it symbolize? What was it used for? Well, according to the book Practical Egyptian Magic, it says, emblematic of the element of air, this consists of a circle or a solar type disc enclosed by a pair of wings. In ritual magic, it is suspended over the altar in an easterly direction and used when invoking the protection and cooperation of the sylphs. Along with the sun as the so-called great fire god, the serpent was connected. In the mythology of the primitive world, the serpent is universally the symbol of the sun. In Egypt, the commonmost sign of the sun, or sun god, is a disc with a serpent around it. And of course, the society knew about this because in the 1921 May 25th Golden Age on page 506, it said, The original reason for the connection of the serpent with the sun 
appears to have been that as the physical world receives its light from the sun, so the serpent was held to have been the great enlightener of the spiritual world by giving mankind the knowledge of good and evil. This, of course, like all idolatry, is an absolute perversion of the truth, but it serves to identify the sun god with Satan. So with this identification of the symbol with Satan, the society stopped putting it on its literature. So by their own admission, that symbol identifies Satan. Another symbol used by Russell was the cross and crown. And this is from the Knights Templar Order and Freemasonry. Masonic author Ray Denslow reveals the meaning for the cross and crown image. The cross and crown may be said to be confined almost exclusively to the historical degrees in masonry as exemplified in the various orders of knighthood of York and Scottish rites. In Gaul, we find the cross to have been a solar symbol when it had equal arms and angles. To the Phoenicians, it was an instrument of sacrifice to their god, Baal, and to the Egyptians, the crux and sada was his symbol of eternal life. So it's kind of amazing that the cross and crown is almost exclusively for degrees in Freemasonry, because there are those out there who still say they think Charles Taze Russell wasn't really involved with the Knights Templar and Freemasonry. But a picture speaks louder than words, and it, a picture can tell a thousand words. And it's pretty amazing how when you do the research into all the symbols Russell used, they seem to all tie together and point towards the occult and Satan and the demons. It's pretty amazing. There are a number of specific areas of the occult that the Watchtower became tainted with. One of these I'm sure you've heard of before, phrenology, is an occult science where they believe that a man's character can be foretold by reading the bumps and cavities of one's head. Charles Taze Russell and the Bible students were really into this when Watchtower first began. In fact, in the Golden Age of 1921, it says, The size of the nose, as also the size of the eyes, is not without significance. The small-nosed man cannot have a judicial mind, whatever his other excellencies may be, and a man whose nose upturns can no more be expected to administer justice than a pug dog can be expected to act as a shepherd. And from the Watchtower reprints, 1915, January 15th, page 5611, it says, Man's head is shaped differently. Therefore, he can think of subjects that lower animals cannot think. Man with the head of a given shape cannot think with the same breadth of mind that a man with a better shaped head, a man who is less fallen. Some have lost more, others less of the original perfection of the original intelligence given man in his creation. So today, we may think of phrenology as quackery, and how could they believe in that? But Russell and the Bible students were really into this. And it was a lot like palm reading of today, though the future was not foretold. Different aspects of one's personality was foretold, even things one didn't know of oneself, by reading parts of the human body. It was an occult science just like palm reading. Another one they got into was astrology. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses today are taught that astrology is bad. They are told they cannot read their horoscope, that Things like that could possibly give them demons and make them demonized. But back in the beginning of Watchtower's history, they actually were all for it. Now I'm going to read you this little article from the 1914 Convention Report. Please pay close attention because the one after this is going to tie in. If then we find the divine plan written in these constellations, realizing that man could not have written a plan that they did not even understand, it would be only reasonable to ascribe its origins to God. Indeed, the same Bible which points to the Great Pyramid points also to the heavens as declaring the wonderful plan of God. Now, as you see here, they are telling the Bible students that the astrology is good, that it shows the divine plan of God and that it must be from God. It's not from humans, it's from God. Now, this was in 1914, 
But prior to this, the Watchtower wrote this article in the July 1st, 1905 Watchtower, and it says, The above thoughts came to me as we recently read the predictions of some noted astrologers whose information we credit to the spirit demons and not to ability to read destiny in the stars. One of these in particular closely touches dates and incidents on the line of our scriptural expectations as follows. So did you catch that? Now this was prior to that other article but in this article they say that astrology is from satan and the demons but in that article later they said no it's from it's from god so either they're very confused or they just admitted that their god is satan <laughs> but i don't know which one it is you'll have to make up your mind on that i just thought that was interesting and i would show you another way that the watchtower had involvement with demons was from Dr. Abram. He used a technique, ERA, through a machine. This machine worked just like a Ouija board. ERA means Electronic Reactions of Abrams. In 1923 and 1924, the Scientific American Magazine put together an investigation committee and investigated the electronic reactions of Abrams. The investigation lasted one year and cost the Scientific American $20,000. The committee came to the conclusion that the ERA was occultic or psychic in nature. Before beginning to test a doctor, they would set preliminaries, subduing the lights in the room, and they reminded them in no little degree of a psychic seance. After tests with other doctors that included similar and even more bizarre claims and procedures, they came to the conclusion that the whole thing bears striking resemblance to the subjective psychic phenomenon. Compare it to the Ouija board. Compare it with automatic writing. Scientific American also noted that Dr. Abrams claimed that his electronic diagnosis enabled him to tell how old was a donor just from a drop of blood, whether he was white, black, red, or yellow, what diseases he was suffering, what diseases could be expected in the future, and the expectancy of life. If additional information was desired, Dr. Abrams could tell the religion, the racial traits, and even the location of the individual at any given moment. During one of his classroom demonstrations, he received a photograph of a young man, placed it in the di diamondizer, found the young man to be insane as a result of serious syphilitic condition, and then running an electrode over a map located the individual at Stockton, California. Photographs, strands of hair, handwriting, and many other things intimately connected with an individual could be used for electronic diagnosis in place of a drop of blood. The thing was uncanny. It bordered on occultism. Dr. Abrams himself diagnosed his own life expectancy and predicted his death would occur in January of 1924 based on his own ERA diagnosis, which was fulfilled. After one year of tests and $20,000 spent, the Scientific American Committee's conclusion as to the scientific basis of the ERA was that it was the height of absurdity and utterly worthless. Radionics and associated devices are considered fraudulent by the U.S. government today, and using it to diagnose and treat diseases is now illegal. Today, the only one supporting radionics on either continent are those involved in the occult and the New Age movement. One occult spiritual group that supported the ERA after the scientific investigations that denounced it were the Jehovah's Witnesses, who supported it until 1953. Individuals within the movement even invented new radionics devices to cure fellow Jehovah's Witnesses of diseases, including cancer. Though today, Radionics is considered quackery and to be occultic, psychic, and spiritistic in nature by Jehovah's Witnesses. In 1928, Roy Goodrich, a Jehovah's Witnesses, he went to an ERA practitioner on the advice of Watchtower Society representatives. What he witnessed convinced him that the ERA methods were spiritism and the operator of the Oslo class was a spirit medium. He began a one-man campaign to eradicate the use of this medical procedure from Jehovah's Witnesses. After a shouting match with the society president, 
Joseph Rutherford. Over this issue, Goodrich wrote an article for the Golden Age in 1930 explaining his views. The Society had a Bethel doctor, May Work, write a response for a subsequent issue, declared the matter closed, and continued to use the ERA. Goodrich found out that the ERA Ouija board methods were still being used at Bethel in the 40s. He complained once again to Washtower officials that they were involved in spiritism and because of it, he was disfellowshipped as a result. Brother Goodrich wrote a whole book about him trying to get the society to stop using this Ouija board of a machine in Bethel. He documents everything he went through, all the conversations he had with Rutherford and others in a book called Demonism in the Watchtower. Some of the chapters are actually um, kind of funny, like it's called Bethel Rides a Broom, and he has good names for his different chapters. But if you'd like to read it, they, they have it for free online, um, Goodrich's book all about what he went through trying to inform them that this m was involving demons and that they needed to stop, but instead of listening to him, they disfellowshipped him, of course, like they always do, with people who tell them the truth. They used this machine at Bethel for many years. They all swore by it that it was just helping them so much, especially Rutherford. He really enjoyed it. And if you think about it, now I don't know this for sure, but Joseph Rutherford, he died of colon cancer. Maybe that's why. Maybe because he was so in love with this ERA machine box instead of going to a real doctor. But Goodrich's book, Demonism in the Watchtower, is a really good book. If you have time, you should read it. It's very interesting. I know personally that when I was young, the Jehovah's Witnesses were always into weird medical things. Uh, when I was young, they would have parties that they would invite everyone in the congregation and they'd go to a person's house and they would have some doctor there doing some weird stuff. Like, for instance, we went to one where I was just maybe uh, 12 or 13 years old and sister and brother Youngblood had this party at their house and there was a doctor there and so they made me sit down in a chair and the doctor looked at my eyes. Now from looking at my eyeball, he could tell what was wrong with everything in my body. He said, um, he just looked at my eyeballs and said <laughs> that I had stomach problems, my head was messed up, I had this and that. And then when he was done, he said, okay, she needs this vitamin and this vitamin, blah, blah, blah. blah. And, and then they made um, us buy vitamins. <laughs> But I, I, I don't know why, and then I don't know, probably a lot of you out there who were Jehovah's Witnesses remember that for a while uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses were into that one vitamin. They were just selling it. I can't, oh, I wish I could remember what it was called, but just a bunch of Jehovah's Witnesses were selling this one vitamin. It, it helps you lose weight and it just... It made you have energy and all kinds of stuff. It, it It's just funny how much Joe's Witnesses are into weird medical things. I've even witnessed it myself in, in my congregation and in my life. It is very interesting because Goodrich proved to Rutherford and others at Bethel that this machine was involving the spirit world and it was demonic. And they knew it because he proved it and... They just continued to use it till 1953, and this is long after the Scientific American and others had come out saying that this machine didn't work, that it was, you know, occultic and like seance. They still continue to use it, even knowing this. It was Freddie Friends who kept it going till 1953, so that'll show you something. And also in my next video, I will prove to you from court cases, because it's documented facts, that Freddie Franz, uh, he did admit that he had spirits talking to Jehovah's Witnesses and that they were the ones who were 
giving the information that they were writing in publications. It is, it was amazing to me when I read this, but it, it is a documented fact in a court of law. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye everyone.